Love You Forever and I'll Call Before I Come Over by Topher Payne, an alternate ending to Love You Forever by Robert Munch, originally illustrated by Sheila McGraw. Now, the son knew this was happening. He was just pretending to be asleep. He didn't particularly enjoy being awakened in the middle of the night by his mother climbing in the window, crawling around on the floor and dragging him out of bed. She wasn't exactly being stealth about the whole thing. She even turned on the overhead light. It made his cat freak out. How could anyone sleep through that? He was always very tired at work the next day. But he loved his mother very much and knew this made her happy. She'd done this little routine his whole life. The son laid in his bed thinking. He was not sure what to do. And then he thought of a solution. So the next time the mother climbed up the ladder to crawl into the son's house and rock him back and forth and back and forth, she was surprised to find the son awake waiting. He had installed security bars so a person couldn't just come and go through that window whenever they pleased. The mother was very confused. Son, she said, is something wrong? And the son said, I love you forever. I like you for always. But what's going on here isn't working for me. The next night, he invited his friend Alejandra over to make dinner together. They'd been very best friends since they were little back when he would sing into floor lamps and Alejandra would talk on the phone upside down. It's important to have a friend you can talk to who will listen to the good things and the bad. He told her that he'd installed new security measures and his mother had gone home. Alejandra asked why he hadn't just talked to his mother. He told her that he couldn't find the right words to say. Sometimes we hesitate to tell someone we love that we need a little space because we're worried about hurting their feelings. But when we keep things bottled up inside, often we will we get, we'll get frustrated and overreact. Alejandra reminded her friend that personal space and setting limits aren't just things we want, they're things we need. Because his mother loved him forever and liked him for always, she would want him to feel comfortable and happy. They couldn't find a solution. In a family, everyone might not get what they want, but they try to give each other what they need. The son invited his mother on a walk in their favorite park. He apologized for installing the bars instead of having a conversation. The son explained that he loved having his mother visit, but he liked having quiet time for himself too. So he needed her to call or text before coming over, and he would prefer that she use the door. The mother apologized. She told him that watching her little boy grow and grow and grow into a grown-up man made her very happy, but also very sad. No matter how wonderful things are going to be, sometimes it's hard to let go of things where how of how things were and she didn't know how to say i miss you son i wish we had more time together you see even parents can struggle with asking for what they need the son was happy to make special plans with his mother they could watch a movie together or take a walk or just sit around and have hot cocoa with star marshmallows because everything is a little better when you're you've got hot cocoa with star marshmallows When the mother got back to her house, she felt quite content. She'd learned that talking about your needs with someone you love and hearing theirs in return doesn't put distance between you. It brings you closer together. And just before she got ready for bed, she received a text message from her son. It read, I love you forever. I like you for always. As long as I'm living, 
my mommy you'll be the end